Japan is a nation of vending machines, 5.2 million of them. You find them everywhere, selling all sorts of products. And many vending machines do much more than simply that. This model, for example, evaluates a customer's sex and age in order to recommend specific drinks. There are ultra-energy efficient vending machines. Vending machines with life-saving equipment. Vending machines that do all kinds of surprising things. Japan was the world leader in vending machines that could dispense hot drinks in cans. The inspiration behind their development might surprise you. Retro low-tech vending machines still exist and they have ardent fans. On this edition of Begin Japanology, our theme is vending machines. We'll examine the unique history of how they developed in Japan, as well as their latest cutting-edge features. Hello and welcome to Begin Japanology. I'm Peter Barakan. For better or worse, Japan is a country of vending machines. You will find them everywhere. In fact, it's hard to avoid them. I remember when I first came to Tokyo about 38 years ago being amazed at the number of vending machines and that's just a small fraction of what you'll see these days. For example, take a look at this and every one of these is selling canned and bottled drinks. It's perhaps an indication of how little crime there is in Tokyo, although increasingly these days you'll find vending machines which in addition to cash cater to prepaid cards as well. Now these drink machines are by far the most prominent but you'll also find machines which sell a variety of perhaps slightly less predictable goods too. For example, a vending machine selling bananas, a nice healthy snack if you had to leave the house at the crack of dawn without time for breakfast. Or if you got caught in a sudden downpour, there are umbrella vending machines. There are even machines selling paperback books. So there are machines selling unusual things and machines selling things in unusual ways. Let's take a look at some of the latest innovations in the vending machine industry. This is a drip coffee vending machine. It grinds the beans fresh for each cup. The result is very tasty coffee. Of course, you have to wait a little while for the coffee to be ready, and that could be a problem. But take a look at this. To keep customers from becoming impatient as they wait for their coffee, there are miniature video cameras mounted inside the machine. They present a live feed of the coffee being made from start to finish, complete with upbeat music. Time always seems to crawl when you're waiting, but watching this makes it fun. The time passes quicker. This next vending machine speaks for itself, literally. Put your money in and the vending machine starts talking. Thank you. See you again. It can greet customers in English, standard Japanese or even local dialects. The maker wanted to give some human warmth to the typically impersonal vending machine. Even if it's not an actual person, it still feels nice to receive that greeting. This revolutionary vending machine debuted two years ago. It can make extremely precise recommendations tailored to individual customers. When you step in front of the machine's large LCD screen, several of the products will be marked with red symbols. These are the drinks that the machine has recommended just for you. Each customer gets different recommendations. How does it work? The secret is a miniature camera on the machine. It captures an image of the customer standing in front of the machine. It compares the customer's face with a pre-installed database of one million male and female faces and determines the customer's age and sex by analyzing certain key features around the eyes and mouth. 
The machine also takes into account the current temperature and time of day to make the very best recommendation possible. This woman chooses the hot coffee that the machine recommends. This is what it suggested I buy. And in fact, I did want something warm to drink. At my age, I never drink anything cold. I drink things warm even in summertime. How did it know? The machine offers benefits to its owners as well as its customers. This machine made it possible for us to know, for the first time, exactly what type of people are buying what products and when they are buying those products. All kinds of data collected by these machines are now being used to develop new products. One interesting thing we saw in the data was that men in their 30s and 40s like sweet fruit drinks in the evening and at night. So we started stocking products to match those customers' tastes. The data has been very useful. Today's vending machines go beyond simply selling products. They also make life easier for both sellers and buyers. OK, we're going to try out that machine you just saw that gives individual recommendations. For example, when this young woman stands in front of it, it's recommending her certain products which sell particularly well to her gender and age group. And, OK, she bought it. Now I'm going to have a try. Let's see what it offers me. Come on, then. OK. Hmm, so this is what people my age are drinking, is it? Apple juice and black coffee. So people my age are drinking apple juice and black coffee. Well, I'm just going to go for a regular bottle of water. And there's actually a reason for that. Based on the marketing data that they get from the sales of these machines, the company that makes them discovered that a lot of people buy bottles of water on their way to work in the morning. And as a result of that knowledge, they've developed this special cap which doesn't pull off, it just pulls over to the side here, so that you can have a swig of your water and recap it without having to worry about where the cap is, because you've probably got a briefcase in the other hand. I'm not sure, I don't think I could do this with one hand, though. Anyway, this is where we're going. One of these days, you'll probably be able to walk up to one of these machines and say, I'll just have my usual, please. Anyway, this is the state of the art. Let's now go back and take a look at the dawn of the age of vending machines. This is the oldest Japanese vending machine in existence. It sold stamps and postcards. Made in 1904, it's now a carefully preserved artifact. It's very simple to use. Put a coin in the slot, then pull on a tab. And a single stamp is dispensed. Let's take a look inside. The machine doesn't require any electricity. During Japan's samurai days, the art of making clockwork devices developed. Using the power of springs and gears, dolls were made that imitated complex human movements. The first Japanese vending machines borrowed techniques from traditional clockwork devices. This vending machine for caramel sweets was made in 1931. Even at that early stage, vending machines were being built with special features to amuse customers. When a coin is inserted, a samurai action film begins to play. This type of movie was all the rage back then. Inside the vending machine are a projector, and a phonograph. When the movie has run for 20 seconds, a box of caramels comes out. 
to continue watching the movie, children would buy two or three boxes. With this entertaining feature, the machine actually boosted sales. Vending machines became a fixture of everyday life in Japan during the economic boom after the Second World War. It all began in 1957 with the launch of fountain-style juice vending machines. This unit is still in service today. And here it is in action. See how the juice is flowing up like a fountain? It's fun to watch. Machines like this became a huge hit with the public. In no time at all, 15,000 of them had been installed in places like department stores and cinemas. Children couldn't get enough of them. These were the pioneers that taught the Japanese public what a vending machine was. In 1970, the number of vending machines in Japan topped one million. Helping to drive the vending machine boom was the advent of convenient sturdy cans for drinks and the spread of 100 yen coins. And right around that time, a revolutionary vending machine was invented. It came from a big soft drinks company that had just developed cans of hot coffee. Company founder, Toshikage Tanida, had the idea of selling these cans of hot coffee in vending machines. When we looked into it, we found that no machine like it existed anywhere in the world. Not in Japan, and not anywhere else. No one had made a vending machine for hot drinks. Hot coffee was a winter drink. What Tanida wanted was a machine that could switch between selling cold drinks in the summer and hot ones in the winter. He asked a number of manufacturers if they could make such a machine, but they just laughed at him. They said, we can't build a machine like that, don't be stupid, and it probably won't sell anyway. Why take an order for a machine like that? They all rejected me. Finally, he found a manufacturer who would do the job. The engineer in charge of the project, Ikuo Harashima, was initially baffled. The existing vending machines for cold beverages were basically large refrigerators. The idea of installing a heater in a refrigerator seemed absurd. As his trial and error attempts continued, Harashima suddenly found inspiration in an unexpected place, the heaters used on trains. I was riding on a train in the dead of winter, and yet my feet felt very warm. It occurred to me that we could use something like that. It would be so effective. Harashima ordered a miniaturized version of the train heater. He now had a reliable heat source. But there was another challenge, keeping the temperature of all the cans the same. Distributing the heat from the heater with fans would mean that warm air would only go in the direction the fans were spinning. Harashima decided to place three metal plates over the heater in order to redirect the airflow. He used Buddhist incense sticks to generate smoke that would allow him to observe exactly how the air was flowing. This clever idea helped him to identify the optimal angle for the metal plates. In 1972, this new kind of vending machine made its debut. It could sell canned drinks cold in the summer and hot in the winter. It was a world first. Other manufacturers followed suit. And today, vending machines selling both hot and cold drinks are everywhere. Japanese people take it for granted these days that you can get both hot and cold drinks from the same machine. I, for one, had absolutely no idea of all the work that went into creating that system, though. This machine behind me is just in the process of being switched over from all cold to hot and cold. Let's take a look. Hello. 
こんにちは。こんにちは。This is Kenta Maikawa, and it's his responsibility to replenish and maintain machines like this. Now, what are you in the process of doing right now? Until now, it was all cold, but now I'm switching some of the products from cold to hot. From today, this section is hot drinks. So, how do you do the actual switch over so that the customers know which are the hot drinks? You push this button inside the machine, and the corresponding section of the display changes from cold to hot. Oh, okay. So we now have four different kinds of coffee plus milk tea and green tea that are going to be hot drinks instead of cold drinks. Do you have clear-cut instructions about when you're supposed to switch over from cold drinks to hot drinks? A general rule of thumb is when the temperature drops below 20, we start switching over to hot drinks. And does that apply to all of the machines? No, not to all of the machines. Elderly people, for instance, tend to enjoy hot drinks throughout the year. So, at old people's homes and wherever there's a lot of demand for hot drinks, the switchover may take place earlier, or the machine may be stocked with more tea than coffee, or basically, it's up to the judgment of the worker in charge of that particular machine. Thank you very much. When these new machines come on the market, the older ones gradually get phased out. But the old-fashioned vending machines do also have a unique charm of their own. Let's take a look at some. Beside this main road stands an assortment of vending machines. At night, people from who knows where show up here. They have come for the udon noodle vending machine. That's right. There are vending machines that dispense hot meals. Sometimes they're called self-service coin restaurants. In the 1970s, vending machine spots like this sprang up all around Japan. In an era before convenience stores and chain restaurants, the ability to get a hot bowl of udon or a hamburger late at night was something special. However, with the rise of 24-hour retailing, these vending machine spots have been on a long, steady decline. But one man remains fascinated by the retro appeal of these old vending machines. His name is Yusuke Uotani, and he's 39. Seven years ago, he began seeking out retro vending machines around Japan, with camera in hand to document them. His original reason for doing this was these machines evoked nostalgia. On a family trip when he was at primary school, he had an unforgettable encounter with a vending machine that sold hamburgers. To me as a boy, the idea that a hamburger could come out of a vending machine was astonishing. It came out of the machine so piping hot you couldn't even hold it. It made a big impression on me when I recall the family trips I took as a child. I think of that hamburger. Uotani posts the videos he takes on the internet. He even has his own website. He has made 150 vending machine documentaries so far. Before machines were computerized, the complex process of preparing a hot meal was done mechanically. A big part of the appeal of these vending machines is how low tech they are. There are people who see one of these machines and say they've just got to buy something from it before the machine disappears. In our super high-tech age, eating food from decades-old machines like these is a total anachronism. Well, that's why I like them. Here is footage that Uotani shot in Shimane. A machine dispenses a steaming bowl of udon noodles. How does it work? Uotani got permission from the owner to film the inside of the vending machine. The machine is full of bowls already containing the noodles and other ingredients. The rack rotates, and hot water is sprayed into the bowl. As soon as the noodles are heated up, the hot water is flung away. Then, broth is poured in. 
there's an appeal here that current machines just don't have. Vending machines of this older era are mechanical, but they also possess a human warmth. The ingredients are all handmade by the operator, so each machine's food tastes different. All the ingredients are different too. They may be machines, but they really get that human touch across. That's what I love about them. Almost every day, Uotani receives comments online about his videos. I had no idea places like this existed in Japan. I wish I could ship a couple of those vending machines over to Italy. Retro Japanese vending machines are amazing people around the world. I'm in Komae Station, which is pretty much at the southern edge of Tokyo on a commuter line. And they've got a vending machine here, which has a rather unusual feature. This is it. This has a built-in AED, which, if you're unfamiliar with it, stands for Automated External Defibrillator. And that's a machine which can administer a light electric shock to someone whose heart has stopped. These machines have been placed in all kinds of public spaces recently, including, as you see, some vending machines. Now, I'm going to be talking to Mr. Katsushisa Suzaki, who works here at the station. How long have you been doing this, putting these uh, AEDs in vending machines on this line? We've been doing it since March of last year. Anyone can use an AED, so we wanted to put them where it is easy for people to notice. I'm assuming you don't have to put a coin in the machine to open this thing up. You can take it out any time. Oh, with an alarm as well. When you open up an AED kit, it'll play audio guidance, so you'll know what to do. There have been instances where commuters on our line were resuscitated using an AED, albeit not a vending machine AED. Thank you very much. Well, in addition to these AEDs, let's take a look at some other vending machines that have kind of social functions to them. Since the Great East Japan earthquake, the Japanese have become increasingly energy conscious. That concern spurred the development of a vending machine that uses almost no electric power during the day. One secret is a special cooling substance used inside and also highly efficient vacuum insulation that is unique to this machine. It uses electricity at night to cool itself down and can then keep products cool for about 16 hours during the day. Daytime is when peak electricity usage occurs. The most helpful thing you can do to conserve energy is not to use electricity during those hours. This summer, test units were deployed. They cut daytime electricity consumption by 95% compared to conventional vending machines. They will be introduced in earnest starting next year. Now, how about this vending machine? It has a solar panel on top to generate its own electricity. About three hours of sunlight is enough to provide all its lighting needs for a night. The machine also has a customer detection feature. It only lights up when someone approaches. This is a good way to conserve energy. The usual fluorescent lighting has been replaced by LEDs. This vending machine goes all out to save energy.
And there's more. The displays can show text that has been entered by city officials, such as the location of an evacuation centre. The city of Omuta has placed these vending machines at primary schools and other evacuation locations. Now let's take a look at a machine at a university in Miyagi. When you buy a drink from it, you have the option to donate your change. Push a button and money will go to a charity. About 800 of these machines have been set up around Japan. The three machines on this campus have raised 130,000 yen over the past year. When people are soliciting donations on the street, potential donors may feel hesitant. But making a contribution when you buy a drink is easy. I think it's a good idea. Those machines we saw which are designed to dispense their drinks free of charge in the case of disaster have actually been put to use, especially in the case of the Great East Japan earthquake last year. And with disaster awareness on the rise now, a lot more of these machines are going to be installed in the near future. Personally, I've always wondered if Japan really needed quite so many vending machines. So it's kind of comforting to see some of them with the solar panels on top, and also to know that there are companies who are willing to sacrifice a little bit of their profit in the case of disaster. I'll certainly drink to that. I'll see you again next time. Japan has put its own unique twist on all kinds of Western-style sweets, and these confections are recognized as some of the world's best. We take a bite of this fascinating part of Japanese food culture. <laughs>